The, the, the major part for this talk will be to try to explain to you how we as the uh, companies in the Middle East, and I, I'm generalizing here, but we have, uh, as companies in the Middle East, how we function, and also how uh, you can take and understand from us how we are not that far off from where you are. Because I know the, a lot of people think the Middle East is this, well, how should I put it? Alien. It's just something over there. What exactly is the Middle East? Um, and I'd like to, to help you come bring this closer to what we are in terms of, of uh, how we function and how things work over there. <laughs> One of the hardest things is to split what is that of a business and what is that of a family. And until recently, our family board was structured in that issues to do with the family were also part of the board, which is kind of strange because you have people who are there and going, I don't know what, I have, what I'm doing over here. It has nothing to do with me. And they're twiddling their thumbs going, this is a family issue. Don't talk to us. But unfortunately, because they are there, family members wanting to strike a, p a point against another would start turning to the general manager or the uh, CEO or the CFO, or whoever the person is, and say, what do you think? And that person's thinking, hmm, if I answer him in support of what his point is, that person is going to hold it against me. But if I answer truthfully, which I think is wrong, what the person is saying is wrong, then he will hold it against me. What's the right answer? <laughs> I don't know. This is also another point. Um, here, when I've, uh, and I interact, by the way, in, in some of our joint venture boards, when I interact with uh, uh, professional managers, I see it very clearly. So the, the uh, CEO will be grilled, no, no, seriously grilled by the board members. Um, and when it's all over and done, come, let's go have uh, a coffee or a drink or whatever. And it's like nothing happened. In our culture, when I say something to you, it's taken as I am attacking you. It's very personal. It's very much part and parcel of who I am mentioning this to you. You are my target, and I am going to attack you. And it doesn't stop. And because in a family business, it doesn't stop there. So you go home, and you're thinking, well, it's all over and done. And all of a sudden, you have a phone call, and your mother gets a phone, a phone call from her brother, who's saying, your son was insolent towards me. And your mother was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. And she comes and why are you insolent towards your uncle? And you have to explain, no, mother, in the board, we are directors outside, he's my uncle. And it's very hard, this, this separation is extremely hard. And as you grow older, and with generational gap, it becomes even harder. So I have, just to give you an idea, when I joined the board, uh, I was 26, and my uncle was 76. And the youngest cousin who was on the board was 42. I was the youngest member of my board, and I was just fresh out of my, I got my MBA, I'm, I, I really know my business. And so I'm sitting and talking and talking and talking. And then it starts to dawn on me, you know what? There are times to shut up. <laughs> because if you don't shut up, people are going to hold it against you. And it starts, I start to realize that it doesn't stop at the board. It starts to continue and chase after you. And I would like to say that my family was an unusual case. In our part of the world, in the Middle East, we are, this is, you will find this re being repeated again and again and again. And by the way, um, uh, doctor, you, you mentioned about not having um, intrigues, as in you at the board talk about the issues and get it done there and then. Well, in, in family businesses generally, I think, it, it's, this is the best time for you to attack your cousins and your brothers. And your, <laughs> you don't want to do it in their face. You want to go behind their backs and say, oh, by the way. And in the Middle East, to be specific about that one, in the Middle East, um, I think we strive on drama. If you watch our TV programs, significant, I would say 90-something percent of the TV programs are just dramas, and we love it. You know, 
the crying, the tears, the, the intrigue. Someone's attacking someone else. Someone's hurting somebody else. And, and the pain. We love this. So in a family business structure, this is ideal. Why on earth would I give this up? Because this is the way we function. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> um, just, just to give you an idea in terms of uh, how my mind works. The world is split into two, two types, two spheres. Um, Northern Europe, um, Scandinavia, Benelux, uh, Britain, Ireland, uh, German, Germanic countries, um, the USA, Canada, Australia. And by the way, you notice I didn't bring in France because I don't think France falls under our sphere of world. They're much more flexible when things happen <laughs> or need to happen. Oh, by the way, I'm saying that, and my, wife, my French wife is sitting over there. So, uh, When you have that, that part of the world, and then, of course, the rest of the world. And the first sphere I would ter term is an impolite world, or impolite sphere. And the other I would term is a very polite sphere. Now, superficially, what I've just said is insulted you and praised myself. But in reality, what I've done actually is the other way around. Because you have the ability to be sincere and impolite with a person, you can tell person X or person Y, socially, I'm speaking here, you can tell them, I dislike you, I don't want you to, I don't like what you do, I don't like this, I don't like that, you don't, I don't, you know, you're not someone I want to interact with socially. However, within this sphere, as in this business sphere, we can work. In the polite society, because I cannot be direct, I have to suggest, I have to dance around the point I want to get to. So I will never come and tell you, you know what, you're ugly. I will never say that. But I'll say is, you know, today I saw a person who looked really horrible. He was, he had really, uh, bad hair, he was badly dressed. Why am I telling you this? For those, who pe for those people who are part of this man mentality, they'll immediately pick up, I'm talking to you. But I cannot say it. But if I said that to you right now, I said, oh, you know what, I saw this really ugly person and he was doing this and that, and, that. and you're going, okay, well, thanks. <laughs> it's information, I don't know what to do with it, but thanks. <laughs> But if you were coming from my part of the world and I said that to you, you'd immediately say, what do you mean? <laughs> of course, i would be saying it, what does he mean? With a big smile and looking at you and saying, yes, I love you. But I don't. When you have such a thing, it makes the dynamic that happens within the business a hell of a lot more harder. I'd just like you to elaborate. You have to, you're stuck with these people in the board, so, sorry, but some yes. of them, I hear you're stuck with them. So how do you avoid it becoming a lethal cocktail? Well, uh, the problem, uh, it can be if it's not, no, if you don't know how to sort out how the things function. There are different ways of, fun of working out uh, within a family business. Um, for example, as a, in our part of the world, as you mentioned in the beginning, in our part of the world, to fire a family member is a social no-no. You, you just can't do that. So the way is around that one is to find them an outpost somewhere in, I don't know, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Send them on the way over there. Tell them it's a promotion. Yeah. <laughs> but since you have to deal with this useless cousin or whatever, how do, you, how do you manage to drive a successful business if you have to think about, okay, cousin this and this, uh, he has to, we have to take care of him, otherwise it will be a social disgrace, and what about her, and this and this? How do you control that with, and still making money? Well, um, f fortunately, we do find ways. I, I know I gave you an example, and uh, <laughs> I was being sarcastic, but what we do do find is um, every, family member is every family member is proud of being part of the family. The thing is that they don't understand when they are actually negative, uh, can uh, negatively affect the business. So what we try to do is, uh, again, it's um, our elders, our uncles, sit there and explain things again and again. And if it doesn't sink in, then it becomes peer pressure from within the cousins, because we're all about the same age, sitting and, and um, you'd have a little type of uh, 
uh, verbal jousting between one another with the idea of starting to say, you know, we'll support you, but that's not a good idea. They couldn't say it in front of, the, in front of everyone else, but we're telling you it's not a good idea. And uh, try to calm them down and try to push them in a certain direction, which is a collective uh, direction that everyone in the family is accepting.